All right, so let's look at some problems. Okay, we've got this bar AB. Um, it's not in pure rotation. You know, it, it, a is going down this incline, B is going up this incline. Um, it's kind of confined along that incline. Uh, they tell us the velocity and acceleration of point A, and we want to know the angular acceleration of the rod at this instant. Well, if it's a rod that's not in pure rotation, um, then it, uh, we have, kind of have one method to find that angular acceleration, and that would be the, um, relative acceleration method. And so I would say something like AB. I kind of like to start on the left-hand side with the one that I know the least about. Uh, so I'd say AB equals AA plus AB slash A and immediately rewrite this as alpha cross R minus omega squared times R B slash A, B A, B slash A, B A. All right. Now, before I can do this problem, uh, I would have too many unknowns if I didn't go ahead and figure out the angular velocity for this bar. Did they tell me the angular velocity for this bar? No. Sometimes you'll be lucky. Sometimes it'll ju they'll just tell you. Uh, but they, don't, they didn't tell me. So I've got to find that. And there's no quick and easy way. Um, I need to either use the relative velocity method or the instantaneous center of zero velocity method. Sometimes one method will be easier than the other, but generally they're both equally as easy. Uh, you can just choose which one you prefer, or you can do both um, and to double check your answer. Uh, I'm gonna use a relative velocity method. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break from acceleration. I'm gonna come back to this. Let me not think about acceleration at all. Let me just think about velocity. For, forget acceleration. What if this was a problem in the previous section said, hey, velocity of A is going down at 2. What is the angular velocity um, of this bar AB? Well, I would say VB equals VA plus VB slash A, and immediately rewrite this as um, omega cross R B slash A. All right. And so VB, do I know VB? No, but I know it is at a 45 degree angle, right? It, it's, it's got to be going along this um, incline. So I would say VB, let's see, cosine 45 in the I, VB sine 45 in the J. Uh, do I know VA? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's two. But I gotta write in I and J, right? So it is going to cosine 45 in the I and down to sine 45 in the J. And then uh, plus omega, I don't know it, but I know it's in the k direction for these two-dimensional problems, cross with our b slash a, and our b slash a is from a to b. All right, that's just 10i. All right, that equation has two unknowns, and that's fine because I have two equations, my i equation and my j equation. My i equation, uh, vb cosine 45 uh, equals 2 cosine 45, uh, that's in the J, that right there, um, that's not going to be in my I e equation, is it? The K crossed with an I would lead to a J equation. So that's all it is in my I equation. One equation, one unknown, I can solve for that. Okay, I, I might could have guessed two. I don't know, this is a 45-45 angle and, and that AB is perfectly horizontal. This is kind of a special case. That's why VB is equal to VA. Usually won't be. But now let me go to my J equation. VB sine 45 uh, equals negative 2 sine 45. And then, yeah, this is going to show up as 10 omega AB. Uh, <clears throat> and then the K cross with the I. Uh, I, J, K. K cross with the I is J. And it's positive J. Uh, and so plug in 2 right there. Uh, just do a little bit of math and get omega AB is 0.283 radians per second. 0.283 radians per second. It came out positive. I guessed it was in the positive K. So this would be uh, counterclockwise. I, I probably don't need to box that in because that's not what the final answer is. Uh, but I needed to do that 
before I could get to the heart of my problem, uh, before I could get to my acceleration part of my problem. And so that is what I need to plug in right there in that omega squared times R B slash A. Okay, so you're ready to do the acceleration part of it. All right, let's do A B equals A A plus A B slash A. And so I kind of like to ask myself, uh, and I should, I should go back to the notes. Maybe I will go back to the notes here. Um, what I like to ask myself, okay, what do I know about point A? What do I know about point B? Is it constrained to move along uh, an incline like the problem that we're working on? Um, or is it in a norm normal tangential path? So I ask myself um, for these problems right here, um, uh, normal tangential, you know, cause normal tangential or linear. And so I'll just write up ahead, it's linear, so I only have to, I know that the acceleration is along this line. But if it's in a circular path, I, I write normal tangential to, to remind myself, hey, for point A, don't forget about normal and tangential acceleration. All right, we're lucky here. This is just point D, B is linear, point A is linear. Uh, so acceleration of B. I don't know it, but I know it is along this incline. Now, it might be straight up, it might be straight down. Uh, just guess, you know, which one. And go ahead and write that angle in there. So I'm going to say uh, A, B, let's see, cosine 45 in the I, A, B, sine 45 in the J. All right, A, A, um, I know it. It is 3, and it is down at that 45-degree angle. So 3 cosine 45 in the I minus 3 sine 45 in the J. All right, then I'm going to do alpha cross R minus omega squared R. So alpha, I don't know, but I know it's in the K direction, cross with R. Uh, what is R? Well, if you did the relative velocity method, it's the same R that you use for relative velocity. Um, you know, it is from A to B, from A to B, which is just 10I. So alpha K cross with 10I uh, minus omega 0.283 squared times 10i, you know, times that r, not cross that r. And so there's my equation. And do you see that if we hadn't already solved for that, I would have had three unknowns. And, and I, I can't have three unknowns in this equation. It's just a 2d and i and j equation. Uh, but I have two unknowns, <clears throat> so I can do this. So let me look at my i equation and look at my j equation. Just enough room. All right, so I'd say AB cosine 45. Uh, and what else do I have in the I direction on the right? 3 cosine 45. Now, is this going to show up in my I equation? No, uh, but this one is. This one is 0.283 squared times 10. Uh, not cross with 10, but times 10. And that equation only has one unknown. All right, we're lucky. So AB... Uh, I've got 1.87 meters per second squared. Oops, it came out positive. That positive means I chose the right direction. I chose up the incline. So it's 1.86 meters per second squared up the incline. In my J direction, I've got AB sine 45 um, and minus 3 sine 45. This one, yes, does show up in my J equation. 10 alpha AB positive or negative? Well, K cross with I is positive J. Uh, so that's positive, and there are no other negatives in there. Uh, this one right here does not show up in my J equation. Uh, so plug in 1.87 right there and get alpha <coughs> of AB um, positive 0.334 radians per second squared. A positive means I chose correctly. I chose in the K direction, which would be uh, counterclockwise. So 0.334 radians per second squared counterclockwise. Now take a step back, maybe pause the video and look at what you did. Look at what we did here. It was an acceleration problem, but I had to use the relative velocity method just to get that omega equal to 0.283. Uh, then I plugged in my acceleration. I made a note that, hey, uh, point B is just in a linear path. Uh, point A, also just linear path. You'll breathe a sigh of relief when you uh, see those linear paths because it makes it easy. It's just at some angle. Um, don't have to worry about normal and tangential. Um, and so I said, all right, AB cosine 45 in the I, AB sine 45 in the J. 
And then on the right-hand side, 3 cosine 45 in the I, been down 3 sine 45 in the J, then alpha cross R minus omega squared times R, two equations, two unknowns.